Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will continue with the discussion on the frequency response of single stage MOS amplifiers. In this series of lectures on analog integrated circuits, eventually I am driving towards uh, lectures on the design and analysis of CMOS op amps. So all these lectures, the initial lectures or like uh, the building blocks or rather the we are laying the foundations for us to eventually understand the design of CMOS op amps. So in that regard, uh, in, this, in this lecture mainly I will focus on analyzing single stage MOS amplifiers with parasitics and also I am going to drive these single stage amplifiers with a source of zero source assistance. And very quickly we will arrive at the expressions for poles and zeros and the DC gain for these amplifiers and uh, so that these results can be used at a later stage when we analyze multi stage amplifiers. So, shown here is a common source amplifier with all the device parasitics and since I am driving it with a zero source assistance, the gate to source capacitance really does not matter because I am driving it with a voltage source, the voltage across that capacitor is already determined, it is instantly charged to whatever input voltage you are applying there, so, so we do not have to worry about it. So then, we are now interested in finding uh, the poles and zeros of the amplifier structure shown here. I have already discussed how to find poles and zeros in these amplifiers. So to find the pole, the quickest way is just to short circuit the input and try to find the impedance at the frequency at which the output impedance blows up to infinity. And that happens as shown in this circuit uh, when the resistance R0 here becomes equal to the sum of the two capacitances. So because CL and CGD will come in parallel with it once you ground the input, they both will come in parallel. So by equating that, you would simply get the pole as minus of 1 by R0 into CGT plus CL. So again, uh, this is something I have already mentioned. So even though there are two capacitors here, the maximum order of the system can be 2. But since there is only one independent node, so input node voltage is fixed. So if I know the output node voltage, then I know the voltages across both these capacitors. So there is only one independent node and therefore it will be the order of the system will just be one. So therefore the system will have only one pole. So now to find the zero on the other hand, uh, we already discussed the procedure in one of the previous lectures. You simply short circuit the output and find the frequency at which the frequency at which uh, the output voltage goes to zero or the sum of the output current here goes to zero. So by that I can direct, I have to, I am for when I am finding the zero, I have to keep my input alive, input voltage should be present. So even when the input is present, the output goes to zero at some value of s. So on that value of s is what we call as zero. Now in this circuit, whenever we are analyzing especially single stage MOS amplifiers, zeros occur when there are more than one path for current towards the output node. Now if I look at this circuit, there is one path through the capacitor and one path through the MOSFET itself. Now this MOSFET, the current through the MOSFET, the path is what I, I would like to call it as a proportional path because the current is proportional to the input voltage. And the current through the capacitor here is a derivative path because the, it's, a, it's a capacitor so therefore the current flowing through the capacitor will be proportional to the derivative of the voltage across it. In this case, because you have short circuited the output node, the entire input voltage will appear across the capacitor. So the current flowing through the capacitor will be a uh, derivative of the input voltage. Now when you have two paths, a proportional path and a derivative path adding up, summing up at certain, at some node in the circuit, so then we can expect a zero to be present in the circuit. Now the polarity of the zero, to understand whether it is a right of plane zero or a left of plane zero, so generally uh, you can just look at the sign of the currents. So if both the currents, say for example in this circuit, at the output node, if you see GMVI is GMVI current is flowing away from the node and uh, CGD into VI is flowing into the node. So the directions of the currents are different. So therefore if the directions of the currents are different then you will you will end up having a right of plane zero. And that can be mathematically very easily derived. I have already derived this so I am not even going to spend time deriving it. So just equate the output current to zero you directly get the zero as GM upon CGD. So now to write the transfer function you need to know the DC gain, the zero on the pole because it's a we already know that it's a single pole system and there is only one zero and at max it can have one pole. So you have, we know the location of the zero and the pole and the DC gain which is minus GM or not. 
So we have the expression for the transfer function. When you plot the response of this transfer function, the pole, because R0 is really a large resistance compared to 1 by GM, and uh, the capacitor CL will gen the load capacitance will generally be larger than the gate to drain capacitance, so the pole will occur first. So we see here the pole after this the gain starts to roll off with a, with, with a slope of 20 decibels per decade, and eventually it flattens out after it encounters the zero at GM by CGD. Had there been no zero, the gain would have rolled off this way. We'll talk about the significance of uh, the zero towards the end of this lecture. So right now, I'll quickly move on to the common gate amplifier. I have already analyzed the common gate amplifier frequency response very briefly. In a common gate amplifier, if I'm going to drive with a voltage source of zero source resistance, then there is only one capacitor in the output which matters. So for this circuit, uh, we have already analyzed it. So I'll directly uh, say how to find the poles and zeros. So for the pole, you'll short the input and find the frequency at which the, in the impedance at this point blows up to infinity. And that happens at R0 becoming equal to minus of 1 by SCL. So, so, so the, the real impedance should be equal to minus of the capacitive impedance. So that's how we were equating before and we were obtaining the poles for the system. So that way we get the pole which is minus minus of 1 by R0 CL. And the DC gain of this system of a common gate amplifier is 1 plus GM R0. So that gives us the total transfer function in this uh, for this uh, single state common gate amplifier. I have just considered one special case where let us assume that there is a, a drain to source capacitance, a very small drain to source capacitance which uh, may not exist in a real system but for example when we do layouts uh, maybe the two wires of the drain and source con con uh, the drain and source contacts are crossing each other. In that case you might end up having some small capacitance between the drain to source. In that case now you see that there are two paths for the output node there is one GMVI component current flowing through the MOSFET and then there is one path of current flowing through the capacitor. So now in this case there are two paths for the current. So therefore one should expect one should expect a zero in this system as well. So to find the zero uh, what we can do is apply the similar procedure. So we will we will short circuit the output node and try to find the frequency at which the output current goes to zero or when I say the output current the short circuit output current is zero. So we will just try to find the frequency at which that happens and that we can directly see uh, there are two paths here one is through the MOSFET you are applying a current uh, voltage VI v across the BGS of this MOSFET so you have a current GMVI flowing through this MOSFET and then there is a current a derivative current flowing through the capacitor which is VI into SCGS plus GM into VI which is the current through the MOSFET and also there is current through R0 so I have included R0 as well so then that you have to add that to the total current and equate it to 0. Now if you see here all the three currents are especially if you look at the real part which is the proportional current and the derivative current they both have same polarity meaning they both are flowing towards the output node so therefore you should expect a left of plane 0. The 0 approximately if I ignore 1 by R0 is much smaller compared to GM so then the 0 will simply be minus of GM upon CDS. So again uh, if you plot the response of this amplifier at low frequencies it is 1 plus GM R0 so first you will encounter the, the, the pole which happens to be at 1 by R0 into CL plus CDS. Then it encounters a 0 at GM upon CDS and after that the gain flattens out. Had there been no capacitor series, the gain would have just decayed down. Now finally, we analyze the common drain amplifier, the frequency response of a common drain amplifier and I will quickly go through a similar uh, analysis. So again, the capacitor CGD here uh, will not play any role because I am driving it with a voltage source of zero source resistance. So the voltage across this capacitor is already recharged to VI. So there is no delay involved in charging or discharging the capacitor CGD. So that won't really figure in in the transfer function. Whereas the capacitor CGS and the load capacitor here that can include the source to bulk uh, and the uh, source to bulk capacitor as well will figure in the transfer function. Now first step 
to find the transfer function, you find the DC gain, and for a common drain amplifier, it is simply GM R0 by 1 plus GM R0, which is very close to 1. And the next step is to find the poles. To find the poles, the procedure is just short circuit the input and find the frequency at which the output impedance blows up to infinity. And that turns out to be approximately uh, GM upon CGS plus CL. Okay, so I've ignored R0, I've assumed 1 by GM is much smaller. If you look into this source terminal, the resistance is 1 by GM parallel R0. I've ignored R0, so you get GM upon CGS plus CL. So that's the location of pole. And to find the zero, you have to again follow the same procedure, keep the input alive and short circuit the output and find the frequency at which the current output current flowing into the short circuit node ISC should be equal to zero. Again, we can even, even before doing the analysis, we can quickly say that that zero is going to be a left off plane zero. The reason being that you have, you are applying a positive voltage at the gate and you're taking the output at the source terminal. Now you can see that both the MOSFETs current and the current through the capacitor are flowing in, this, in the same direction. So therefore we can say that the pole will be a left off plane pole. So you just have to equate the two currents which is GM by, uh, sorry, it will be GM times VI plus SCGS times VI equals zero. By equating that I'd get the zero as minus of, it, this is a left off plane zero, minus of GM by CGS. I've also written zero in radians per second, which is GM upon CGS. So your zero is actually minus of omega z. So, so now when we write the transfer function, uh, you write the DC gain, the zero and the pole. So that completes the transfer function. And when we, when we plot this transfer function, so you get the zero, uh, you first encounter the pole, which happens to be at GM upon CL plus CGS. And the zero comes at GM by CGS, which is which is at a higher frequency because uh, CL will be normally greater than CGS. And after this, the gain flattens out. Had there been no CGS, the gain would have just rolled off like this. Of course, the pole also would have moved a little farther away uh, because you know if there is no CGS, the pole would have been at a slightly higher frequency and it would have just rolled off indefinitely. Now we'll talk a little bit about the significance of zero. If you looked at all the three amplifier configurations, if you looked at all the three amplifier configurations, what we are noticing is that the presence of a capacitance between input and output terminals. So we had an amplifier and there is a capacitor that's present between input and output terminals. It was this capacitor which was the reason for, the, which, which was actually causing a zero in the system or in the amplifier. Now one thing we noticed in all the three amplifier configurations is that after the zero is encountered, which in all the three amplifiers happened to be, the zero happened to be occurring after the pole, and after that occurrence of the zero, the gain was just flattening out. Now one should think that, okay, ideally had there been no zero, the gain would have just rolled off uh, to minus infinity or to zero uh, in a linear scale. If it would have gone to zero, on a logarithmic scale it goes to minus infinity, it would have just gone to lower and lower values, but now it's saturating, the gain is at, in fact, we are seeing that because of the zero, the gain at higher frequencies has increased. Does that mean this is a better amplifier in the presence of zero? So this is something my students get a doubt. So they ask, why is that if, if the zero is going to, I mean, had there been no zero, the amplifier would have given you a lesser gain, but now the zero is actually giving you a better gain at these frequencies. So does that mean this amplifier is better? Now the answer to that question should be answered keeping in mind what is the definition of an amplifier. The definition of an amplifier is that an amplifier is a circuit, it will be able to deliver a finite power to the load resistance here without drawing any power or drawing very minimal power from the input source. That's the fundamental definition of an amplifier. The output power that it's going to deliver to the load resistance should always be greater than the input power drawn from the input source. Now what happens is that in all the three amplifier stages, as I've shown here, this is for a common source amplifier, this is for a common gate amplifier, and this is for a common drain amplifier. In all these three amplifier configurations, if you noticed, at very, very high frequencies, at very high frequencies, the path for the current to the output node, the, the output capacitance, is through the capacitor, the capacitor that connects the input and the output. So in the, in the case of a common source, it's through CGD, in case of common gate, I've introduced the capacitance CDS, it's through CDS, 
and in case of common drain it's through cgs in all these three stages in all these three amplifier configurations at these frequencies after the zero the circuits just behave like a passive circuit so if you had an amplifier with a feedback capacitor so this is your load capacitor feedback capacitor between connecting input and output then a capacitor vcf which is connecting input and output then at high frequencies only this path in the current this path starts to dominate so it just behaves like a passive circuit containing two capacitors so it's just a capacitive division that's happening at high frequencies now one thing you have to understand is that of course you are getting a slightly higher gain but then that current which is being supplied to the load capacitance now is entirely coming from the input source itself for an amplifier on the other hand in a typical amplifier most of the current it's providing to the load capacitor or to the load resistor always comes from the amplifier not from the input source so in fact it behaves like a passive amplifier so it's not really giving a gain or rather increasing the gain it's it's just that the circuit has reduced to a passive circuit with a constant gain so that's the only difference here so what we have noticed in this lecture is that uh, we have seen the source for right off plane and left off plane zero and we have analyzed in which case do we get left off plane zero and which case do we get right off plane zero we do get zeros when we have a capacitive element especially in mos circuits when we have a capacitor connecting the input and the output terminal and especially because of that what we have is that we have two currents at the output node v not in all the three amplifier configurations you have a proportional current which is proportional to the input voltage then there is also a derivative current which is flowing through the capacitor cgd which is depends upon the derivative of the input voltage when you have a proportional path for a current and the derivative path for the current adding at, at the output then you end up getting a zero now whether there are left off plane zero or right off plane zero depends upon the direction of the currents if both the direction of the proportional current and the inter and the a derivative current path are same then we get a left off plane zero if the directions of the currents are different as it happens in a common source amplifier then you end up getting a right off plane zero so with this i'll stop this lecture and uh, i'll quickly move on to in the in this series of lectures on analog circuits i'll quickly move on to the discussion of uh, multi stage amplifiers and eventually to uh, cmos operational amplifiers